Thanks, Laura. Now today I just thought I'd talk about some uh, life lessons from the gym because I've started to realise that there's a, a few things that were fairly obvious to me in my training in the gym, but in the rest of my life they weren't so obvious and, and the lessons that I've learned from that I thought might be applicable to the rest of you as well. And, and the topic behind that is going to be creating lasting change. So, I'm not sure, has anybody, when you're sitting down with someone, maybe talking about personal development and things like that, has anybody ever said to you, oh, I've done that? <laughs> yes. It's like, if I was training at the gym and I won the national titles once, and then, you know, a year later, do you think I could actually win it again without training? It's like, it's just ridiculous you know, to think that in the gym, but some people kind of think, well, you know, I've done personal development, and I'm thinking, are you dead? <laughs> so my favourite quote on that is uh, from Zig Ziglar. He says, uh, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the other thing that, um, when going back to that, when I was training, I'd train you know, really full on for, for three months for a competition and then take like a two week break. And just having that two week break, when I started training again, my muscles would like really, really feel it. And it was, I'd be sore again. So, you know, when we're working on our minds, this is a topic on the mindset, you know, getting in that daily habit of, of, of reading books, going to things like this, listening to good audios on a regular daily basis is, is just working on the muscles of the mind. You know, it's, it's, and you know, just like muscles of the body can atrophy, so can the mind if we stop giving it that positive input all the time. And the other thing people, you know, they often say, well, I'm not good at that, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. But, you know, you've got to start somewhere. So, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly until you learn to do it well. Now, when I started powerlifting, you know, I didn't really have any great abilities to, to lift huge weights. And when my coach first suggested that I go and, and compete in a competition, I looked at the results from the, the year before, and and the weights that the, the people were lifting, I thought, were incredibly huge. And I thought, you know, there's no way I can compete against that. You know, I'm no good at that. I won't do it. But you know, he, he convinced me just to, to go in the competition and try and do a little bit better than I had you know, two weeks before. And I'm so glad that he did that because that's what got me started and that's what got me going down that path. And if I, you know, and within three years, I was lifting way more than any of those lifters and, and breaking the national junior records. And if I believed that where I was at at the start, you know, which was pretty poor, was where I was always going to be, then I would never have got to where I eventually got. So, you know, we've got to all start somewhere, and when we start, we're generally pretty poor at it. But, you know, you keep going until eventually you can do it really well. Now, the other thing that's really hit home to me the last couple of months is that, um, you know, life is, begins at the end of your comfort zone. You know, in the gym, that was pretty obvious because the whole point of a training session, and each set, was that you would get to the point where you were really, really, really struggling on that last rep and grinding it out, and that's where the growth occurred. And that's, you know, if I got to that point, you just got the rush and, and you felt really alive. If I didn't get to that point, just like going through the motions and it was really, really easy, then I was really just like wasting my time. I, was, I wasn't going to get the growth and the benefit from being in the gym and, and doing that work. I'm just really showing up and doing the motions, but not getting anywhere. And in a lot of the rest of my life, whenever things got a little bit difficult or a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit hard, then I would tend to just pull back and go, no, it's not meant to be sort of thing. But when I got the analogy that, ah, it's kind of like in the gym, when things start to get difficult, when things start to get hard, you know, that's, the time to get excited, and that's when I feel alive. I mean, when I first came into this environment um, and decided to give a talk, I was incredibly nervous. I'm, I'm still feel that now, but I just feel so so alive at the same time in it. And it's just pushing through that discomfort and and getting out there and just doing my best. That afterwards, I just feel pumped, excited, and full of life. And that's you know that's where the excitement of life is. I'm just taking it easy and cruising, then, then life feels pretty boring, actually. I thought I'd show you a, a video of all the lifts that I missed at my last competition. Um, so this is the squat, 225 kilos. I want you to notice the, uh, the 
Five guys standing there around me. Everybody to catch me when I fall. This is a bench press. It's uh, 150 kilograms. And again, this is a guy on each side ready to catch the bar. This is a deadlift, this is my favourite. It's 260 kilograms. And there's no one there to catch us because this one it's, it's pretty safe. Anyway, for me, the, the, the scariest lift and the most uncomfortable lift was the squat. Because you know, I'd, I'd get up there and get underneath that weight and you'd feel 225 kilos on your back, <laughs> lift it off the rack and barely be able to step backwards and try and balance. And the mind's going, what are you thinking? You nuts. Are you going to try and squat this? If it wasn't for having those five guys there that were ready to catch me if anything went wrong, you know, they're what gave me the extra confidence just to go for it. And it's the same in this environment here. It's having this great team of people that are here, that are supporting us all the time, all the different functions that we have to, to support us and lift us, and the mentors that we have, that's what gives us the confidence to, to keep going with what we're doing, and I'm so glad that, that we have that here. But the other lesson that I learned from this is that you know, if I had these five guys in the gym, every single time I was lifting the weight, they helped me, then I wouldn't grow, and I wouldn't get the benefit of the training. Now there was a, you know, a goal that I set myself um, the last month that uh, was you know, a bit uncomfortable and a bit stretching and I, I kind of got to the point where I was really feeling the weight and the pressure of this goal on me. It was almost like I had this huge weight on my back and you know, I was just wanting to either throw in the towel or get some help and I called up my mentor and I was going through all this and I knew that getting the help that I was kind of asking for wasn't best thing for me. Um, but I still wanted to hear that from him. And, and just having that, that reinforcement that, you know, even if I didn't make the goal, I was going to learn so much and be so much of a better person just be going for it myself and putting in all the effort myself. So, although it's great to have all this wonderful support that we have here, you know, we still have to do certain things ourselves to get the growth and the benefit of, of all that activity. If we just leave it up to somebody else, then they're going to grow and we're not. Okay, there was a, um, a book that came out that was called uh, Change or Die, and it talked about um, it talked about people that had um, had heart conditions and they needed to make some pretty serious uh, lifestyle changes, or they were basically going to die. And the, and the question was, if you were actually really posed with the question that you had to change your lifestyle or you're going to die, would you be able to do it? And the, the study, the statistics basically showed that 90% of the people in most areas, they couldn't make the changes. Not they couldn't sustain the changes. They would do it for a little while, but they couldn't sustain it. Um, but there was there was one group where they they started to do things a little bit differently. And there was three things that they did. The first one was what they called a framing change. And instead of saying, you know, you have to do this or you're going to die, which was a negative motivator, which you know they really didn't, um, you know, it didn't motivate them enough. And for people that were already you know, emotionally depressed or in a lot of physical pain, and saying that you were going to you could do this, you'll live longer, that really didn't motivate them. So you know, what they had to do was look at positive motivators. So what could be the, the wonderful things? Could they enjoy their life and enjoy time with their partner, enjoy time with their kids and friends, doing all the activities that they would love to do that would bring them joy? And they focused on those. So now in the gym, you know, the motivation was not, um, you know, to do this or do that to get stronger. The motivation was that I had some dream, some vision, like Muhammad Ali says here. You know, I wanted to do something that was significant and that was going to be recognized and remembered. You know, maybe powerlifting wasn't the right choice, but you know, it, it's taught me a lot of lessons that uh, you know, are so valuable in life now. And uh, you know, I, I mentioned in one of my other talks that uh, you know, after, when I first came into this environment, there was some changes that I really had to make in my life, there was some seriously bad habits that I developed over a number of years. And 
in order to focus on the positives and make changes, if I just thought about the habit, then that was, you know, just took me into depression. But to, I had to think about what was really important in my life, what I really wanted. And the two most important things were that I wanted to do something that was of significance and of value and contribution to the world. And I wanted to have a, a wonderful relationship with a woman that I loved. And I knew that the habit that I had was totally inconsistent with both of those things. So, so long as I kept the picture in my head of what I really wanted, then that's what really helped. And the other framing change they had to make in regards to, to that, um, and we've already talked about sugar and addictions and things like that, was um, you know, for a while, if you're struggling with something, you might have you know, cravings for sugar or cravings for whatever it is, if it's cigarettes and craving, cravings for that, whatever it is, if it's an addiction and you've got these cravings, then you know, I was using my, my willpower to fight this, and, but they would keep coming up, they would keep coming up, they would keep coming up, and after a while I would just go, oh, well, you know, if I just give in for now, then that'll get rid of the cravings and I'll be able to start again. But it would really, you know, it really knock me around every time I did that. And it wasn't until I read this book, it was called The, the Seed of the Soul, and it had a little section in it on addictions and, and saying that it was uh, you know, about your own personal power. And that if we saw that every time a craving came up as a weakness, then that was learning from, from fear. But if we saw that every time a craving came up as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to be stronger, an opportunity to gain power over this thing that we once thought had power over us, then that gave us an opportunity to learn through wisdom. And that reframe totally changed the way I approached it. So every time these cravings came up, it's like, it's okay. Every time I say no, every time I resist and I choose something else to do, I'm just getting stronger and I'm getting stronger and I'm getting stronger and getting stronger. And after a while, you know, they disappeared and they're not there anymore. So sometimes it can just be looking at things from a little different perspective. Yes, the next thing that they did in this clinic was they did some radical change in their lifestyle. So instead of just making minute changes to their diet and their lifestyle, they found that radical changes were actually a lot easier to sustain. And the main reason for that was because they actually got results quickly. So you know, if they went on a, a statin drive, then that might alleviate some of the problems, but it didn't make them feel any better. When they started eating healthy, and exercising, then they actually, within a couple of months, started feeling better, and I started that getting those positive reinforcements that they would keep doing these lifestyle changes. So I, you know, when I started powerlifting training, it was a pretty radical change from the type of life that I'd had before. I really didn't do any strength training and was suddenly thrown into this full-on strength training program. And you know, got some very rapid results from that. And when I was trying to, you know, to kick these habits, it was, it was basically going cold turkey. It was a, it was a radical change. And um, I was sitting down with uh, the founder of the Hope Foundation for lunch a couple of weeks ago. It's nothing to do with me. Um, it's a foundation for, for women who are overcoming drug addictions and the sex industry addictions. And you know, we were talking about our experiences with things. You know, she's been out of the industry for 16 years. And she, she said to me, there's, there's still things that are in my head that I can't get rid of from that time. So, what did you do to, to clear up your mind, your head sort of thing? And I said, well, there's this speaker called Skip Ross, and um, I had had his CD series from years ago, his original Dynamic Living series. And it was about one of the few things that I'd left on my computer that I hadn't deleted. So I, I got that CD series out, and I listened to that over and over and over and over again every single day. I started coming to these. Uh, mainly initially to listen to Hercules' talks, and so I went onto the website that you guys have where all the talks are, and I downloaded every single one of Hercules' talks. I downloaded Karen's talks on breaking habits, and I just listened to those over and over and over and over again every single day, because I needed that in my head. So it was, you know, it was, it was a radical change. You know, the other day, Hercules said to me, that's a bit like full on. Well, it's a lot better than what I was downloading before. <laughs> 
And the last thing that they needed was having supporting change. So it was basically with, with this group, when they were changing their lifestyle, they would have um, psychologists, practitioners, and all sorts of different people come in on a regular basis, give them talks, and they would have the, the group get together and encourage each other. So this environment here, it's just like that, you know. We're all here together to support each other in our change, into changing to a healthy lifestyle or whatever it is that you're trying to change for your life. You know, in the gym, you know, I had an amazing team of lifters at the university club, and we would come to training together all the time. We had a great coach, and that just team bonding environment just you know, made it so much easier for all of us to do really well. So we're all there supporting each other and encouraging each other. So you know, all, all the different events that we have here, you know, I'm just feel so lucky that we have all the different things to come to to keep us all um, engaged and if, if you're not coming to everything then maybe you're not really committed to actually changing. Um, so I'd like to, to leave you today with, with just a thought of, of being thankful for, for what we have here with this group and, and this environment and to thank all of the other speakers that, that contribute and give their time and their, their intellectual property. Um, I've ben benefited from it a lot and um, and I hope the rest of you do as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Ray.